Hello again. I am talking about gravity. If you haven't seen part one where I introduced Einstein's thought process and the equivalence principle, go and watch that video right now. There'll be a link down below that you can click. Otherwise, what I'm about to say is not going to make nearly as much sense as it needs to if you haven't watched part one. So don't worry, you can go, I'll wait here, no big rush. You're back? Okay, good, let's get going. So in the first video, I talked about the equivalence principle, how there's this connection, this relationship between inertial mass and gravitational mass, and how they're the exact same, and how Einstein said, quit trying to worry about it, just make it a thing. These two masses are identical. What can we learn? Well, we can learn a few different things. Imagine, and these are Einstein's original thought experiments, by the way, that helped his thinking leading to general relativity or modern understanding of gravity. Imagine you're a, a worker, like a construction worker on a very tall building and you fall. Now, Einstein is pretty dark here, but it's, it's a useful thought experiment, so we're gonna follow in Einstein's steps. Imagine you're falling from an office building, you know, a very tall construction, you know, a skyscraper. As you're falling, take away air resistance. That, that's, that's something we don't need to worry about here because we just want to look at gravity. We don't want to look at anything else. Take away air resistance. You feel weightless, don't you? You don't feel any gravity at all. And we've seen this. You see videos and pictures of astronauts orbiting above the earth. They're in a constant state of free fall. They're always, always, always falling. They just happen to be missing the ground all the time. So they stay in orbit, but they're constantly in free fall, but they look weightless. They look like there's no gravity anywhere near them, not even touching them. They look like they're in the middle of nowhere. How can it be? How can it be if the gravity of the earth is pulling on an object? It's affecting you, like it's causing you to fall, and yet you feel like there is no weight at all. The only way that works is through the equivalence principle. If, you're, if inertial mass and gravitational mass exactly cancel out, that means if you are in free fall, you are weightless. You are experiencing zero gravity, which means, which means you, to you, it looks like the flat space-time of special relativity. You appear, in the jargon, you appear to be inertial. You have an inertial frame of reference, which is exactly the kind of reference frame you need to make all the mathematics of special relativity work. Now, that's a clue. That's a clue. By starting with the equivalence principle and thinking through a particular situation of free fall, special relativity pops out. When you start thinking about the problem of gravity and you dig a little deeper, there's special relativity sitting right there. Aha, that's a clue. The next clue comes with a slightly modified thought experiment along the same lines. Let's say you're in a rocket. You're in a rocket and you have a laboratory or a house or whatever, and you close all the windows and it's a perfectly silent engine. There's no vibration. There's no noise. Again, this is a thought experiment. We're idealizing the situation so we can understand the nature of gravity. We don't want any distractions. In this lab, what would you do? Let's say you're in this lab and the rocket blasts off and you're in space and for a moment you're weightless. And then the rocket really gets going. It really gets going and it starts accelerating. And it accelerates at exactly... 9.8 meters per second squared, the exact same acceleration caused by the Earth's gravity. Now, could you perform any experiment inside your little laboratory in the rocket ship with no windows, you know, no sound, all that, and could you tell if you were still in the rocket that was accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared or you had landed back on the Earth and you were just feeling the Earth's gravity? Well, what, what could you do? Well, you'd drop things. I don't know. You'd pick up your keys, drop them. They'd follow the floor. Now, here on Earth, they follow the floor because gravity's yanking on them. But in the rocket ship, in the rocket ship, if you could peek inside, if you were standing outside the rocket ship and looking at this little laboratory experiment going on, the keys would stay in the same place. Like, say you drop them here. But then the rocket ship would move and meet them and then press them up against the floor and carry it with the rocket ship. But 
from inside. So from outside the rocket, you, you immediately know what's going on. You say, oh, it's just, it's just the rocket accelerating. It's no big deal. Inside the rocket, though, you couldn't tell. Because either way, whether you're on the ground or inside the accelerating rocket ship, either way, the keys fall to the ground. And now you start getting really clever. You're like, I know, I'll get different masses. I'll get keys. And I got this bowling ball over here. Why I brought them on a rocket ship? I'm not going to worry about that. And then something bigger. And I'm going to line them all up perfectly horizontally. And I'm going to let them go. And they hit the floor at the exact same time. Just like Galileo's experiment a few hundred years ago. From the perspective outside the rocket, it's easy to see why. The rocket doesn't care about the masses of whatever you're dropping. Because they're just floating still, boop, 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 lining up. And then the rocket's floor comes up to meet them. And then they stick to the floor. And then they, they continue to be carried on with the rocket. So the rocket doesn't care about the mass. Here's Einstein's insight. Gravity causes acceleration. We're totally used to that statement, right? Just there's gravity, there's a gravitational field, you can drop things, causes an acceleration. No big deal. Through the equivalence principle, where inertial mass is the exact same thing as gravitational mass, Einstein Einstein was able to flip that around. He was able to flip that around. Acceleration causes gravity. I'll say that again because that is such a deep insight. And Einstein made this insight way back in 1907, seven years before finally developing general relativity. Acceleration causes gravity. Gravity causes acceleration. Acceleration causes gravity. If you're inside that rocket and it's accelerating, you are experiencing gravity. It's happening to you. You're being pinned to the floor. And this is where we get the the picture, the sense, when we say gravity is a quote-unquote fictitious force. It's a fictitious force because you want, your natural state is to be in free fall. Gravity, acceleration, it's all the same you want to be in free fall. It's only until you meet the floor that you feel the effects of gravity but the force that's providing that feeling is actually the, the, the atoms and molecules pressing up against each other and resisting each other. That's what gives you your sensation of weight. It's a, of being pressed up against this chair or down against the floor. Exactly the same as if you're in a rocket ship and you're laying on the floor and the rocket is pushing and you can feel the rocket pushing you. It's the exact same thing. 100% identical as gravity pulling you down. Gravity causes acceleration. Acceleration causes gravity. These are identical. So free-falling observers, free-fallers experience no gravity, zero gravity. And acceleration causes gravity. So these are the pieces that Einstein was starting to work with to understand general relativity, where special relativity was there hiding in the corners, And there's this unique connection between gravity and acceleration that doesn't exist with any other force. It just doesn't work. Now, where do you go from there? That's not quite a full theory of relativity, is it? But it's getting closer. But the closer is going to have to wait till the next video. So I know I know it's a long series, and usually I don't do these series, I promise. Uh, but just general relativity is such a nuanced topic. It's so rich. It's so beautiful. I want to take each of these thought experiments in turn to really dig out the, the essence, the core of what it means to live in a universe with general relativity. So I hope you enjoy. If you do, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Turn on notifications. Go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter where you can help make more of these videos happen where we can dig into the mind of Einstein and learn something about our universe. See you next time.